We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Can you see Mr. Oh yeah, oh, Mr. Reagan's back there. Let's put him up front because he's cool. Yeah. Tiggy. Eric. Look at this. Pretty cool, right? Look. Dragons. So do you want to know what this is? <laughs> I, I do. This, my friend, is Battle Lore. <laughs> Battle Lore. <laughs> Battle Lore. This is Battle Lore First Edition. And unfortunately, Battle Lore First Edition is out of print. There's now Battle Lore Second Edition, which is also very cool. And it's kind of similar, but it's a different game. But the good news about Battle Lore is that um, it doesn't matter that it's out of print. It's very affordable still. You on, can still get it? You could still you could still find it on eBay and stuff like that. You don't have to pay crazy prices. It's not like super high in demand, and the game is really cool. Check it out. Battle Lore. Cool box. The back will give you an idea of what the game is, right? Battle Lore is part of a, a game system called Command & Colors. Okay. We previously did an episode on a World War II version of this game called Memoir 44, which I it's love. It's made by the same people? Not made by the same people, but designed by the same guy. Okay. And he's created this system called Command and Colors that the basics of that rule system are used in a series of different games. So it's used in Memoir 44, which is World War II, Battle Lore, which is a, a cross between medieval combat and fantasy, one called Samurai Battles. Do you know what Samurai Battles involves? I'm going to guess... Uh... It's, it's a game where circus freaks <laughs> fight against cowboys. Yeah, so it's amazing. If you didn't watch or, or aren't going to watch our Memoir 44 video, it has your army set up on each side, and each side gets these series of cards. Mm -hmm. So you have in your books, like, whoop, scenarios that like, show you how to set up your armies, or there's variations on the rules where you can, you know, choose how you set up the armies. And this is the map? This is the map, and what you're seeing is actually only a third of the size of the actual board. Can we show it off? Of course, yeah. Right, Again, so, and I I probably say this every time we look at a game, but it has a very Catan look to it with the... Anytime you see hexes, you're like, Catan. Um, it's like Catan. <laughs> but, right? So it looks blank, but it's not actually blank because you have these uh, terrain tiles. Like Catan. <laughs> that, depending on your scenario, you lay out and you can make the map, have your river crossings and your this so and the, that. So the board actually changes every time you play? Every time you play, it's, it's a it's different... It's a new board. Yeah, exactly. Because you're putting them at random? Yeah, you know, there's preset scenarios. You can make up your own scenarios. Like, I've used this system to recreate Middle-Earth battles, Lord of the Rings battles and stuff oh, like that. Oh, okay. So I've built, like, you know, the Battle of Pelennor Fields. So each side is, is set up, and each side has, a, like, a certain amount of these particular cards. And each turn... That you have you choose one of these cards like you're gonna play one of the cards these are dealt to you at the start okay and so when you play one the card says like this one for instance attack three units on the right side so the board is separated into thirds and you take three of the units on the right side and you maneuver them and do whatever you're gonna do you know and each card is different there's you know here's like maneuver guys that have red banners okay so stuff like that and so each turn, one of you plays a card, and you go back and forth, and, you know, you try and wipe out the other other guy's army. I have to admit, and I'm, I shouldn't let, like, game manufacturers know that people like me are out here, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm halfway sucked into this game because they just kept putting out expansions. I, I was going to say, and you're addicted to the whole... The I just, more collectibles, like, kind of... It's not as much the collectibles, but, like, I just... I don't know. There's something about, like, expansions that just get me. The core game they is... They know that. The core game is Battle Lore... So this is like the original, this is the first one that came out almost? Yeah. Okay. And just this alone, and, and you can find it on eBay for good prices. It's, it's, it's you know, you'll pay under 100 bucks for it. You'll, I think you can still get this core one for between 50 and 70 usually. And it comes with tons of stuff. Yeah. It's totally worth it. Like hundreds of... It's heavy. <laughs> oh yeah, hundreds of plastic figures. Really cool. But I think where this game really starts to shine is like with the expansions and all the stuff that you can do with... The expansions. Which Eric happens to have them. I just happen to have them. <laughs> and you can see, like, I took, like, I, I put all my stuff into these, these, uh... The boxes are no longer holding anything. Yeah, because there's just so much stuff, though. There's just so much stuff. So I, you know, I, I wanted to get it all... Organized. Or, organized into, you know... And I've played this a lot. Like, we, we this this is one we, we go back to and we play pretty often. In fact, probably tomorrow we're going to have this set up on the table. Um, <laughs> and it seems like, no, though, the, the board is always the same, obviously, because it's really the, the pieces. So, like, you have a couple of these boards. 
Well, yeah, because there's there's a, a variation on the game where you join two of the boards together oh, okay. to make a giant epic sized board. Oh, okay, so that's cool. Actually, open up open up one of those. We'll show we'll show just how big it gets when you do that. So like this, oh, oh. joins together. So that's the size. Pretty big. Yeah, it is pretty big. And when you lay the train on it, it's a the map yeah, is substantial. The map the map is different every time. You know, the layout and, and all and all that stuff. What are these? This is the this these cards represent the entire setup and rules of the game? Well no, this is for when you're playing with with lore. Unlike say Memoir forty four for instance, this game has an entire magic system. Oh. Where you have spells that you can cast. Okay. And so you get lore. They call it lore. You get these little tokens, depending on what happens in the battle. And as you build up lore, you can spend the lore to cast spells and, and get special abilities right. and stuff like that. With this, you can have a, um, a like a full command group. Okay. With character classes, you can see there's commander, right. warrior, rogue, wizard, cleric. It's cool because it's a strategy board game that brings in RPG elements. Right. So let's go through some of the expansions. So to get into that, now that I brought up RPG elements, let's see. Let's shift that stuff aside. He's got lots of stuff. Folks. I'll talk. I, I, I'm trying to figure out what expansion I'm going to uh, get to first. <laughs> but since I brought up RPG elements, I'll go with one of the later expansions called Heroes. And like uh, like Memoir 44, what's really cool about Battle Lore is that it's kind of modular. Like this game is as complex as you want it to be. Okay. It could be pretty easy. Like I can sit down with you and teach you how to teach it, teach you how to play it in you know 10 15 minutes and you'll be fine but if you start adding stuff it could be a pretty deep game yeah it gets a little nuts so heroes is a pretty cool expansion because it adds like characters with character sheets like, like D &D. heroes yeah so you have these hero <laughs> characters where you actually keep a character sheet like you would in D, D. they could get they get experience and you play through multiple adventures with them and so like you know i had a you know long campaign where we were playing back and forth that's you know the person i play this with most where i had my character it was a he was like modeled after theoden from the lord of the rings because why not yeah i, I, I can't I, I think he had like a like theoden a, king like an elven mage or something like that and we're playing the battles but we also had our hero characters who are in the midst of him getting you know you get like magic items that they can win and, and hmm. stuff like that so it's you know it's kind of that's cool it it, may, it adds like a, a sort of a D&D ish element to a strategy game which is cool so the so the, because i'm trying to register all this this <laughs> is basically just adding specific characters that have different abilities correct into the game correct okay yes and you you, you know you sort of make up the characters but this comes with like the the rules and the pieces right and figures and, you know that sort of stuff that's yeah. kind of cool yeah it's, it, it was a really cool edition and uh unfortunately shortly after this came out this first edition of the game folded so yeah so uh let's see number two then you've got creatures and this is probably pretty self-explanatory right this just comes with big ass monsters some of it was like stuff that used to be exclusive mail away things like this earth elemental right it comes uh with a, a wood giant do you and, have any of those and, and hydra yeah they're in the the, the, kit, the cases you want to see the, the <laughs> see the monsters so right there's the giant oh, that's cool now some people like paint these things I, that's that's oh. that's nutty elementals right oh that's cool now you notice that there's different colored flags right the colors represent the strength of the the, the oh. What the sides are actually whether the flags are vertical or horizontal. Kind of a little confusing unless you, you're used to playing it. So if I was playing against you, all my... All yeah. your flags would be like, let's say, horizontal, and all mine would be vertical. That's kind of weird that they... Instead of going with colors, which is well, traditionally... The reason for that is when you see the dice, you can see that it has, right, the, the, the helmet or shield, green, red, blue. So when you roll, that denotes that you hit that color unit. So that's, okay, that's, that makes sense. so that's what that's all about. So you yeah, the creatures, right here's uh, the Hydra, no heads on it, because notice what's in the box. Look at all the heads. You can change the heads? Well, because that's how it works. It's a Hydra. So as you cut off heads, you have to... Because you're going to have to hit it three times in order to kill it. Yeah, it's something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the, the that's what the creatures expansion does, is it adds creatures. Dragons. Three dragons. This one's super obvious what this is. Three dragons and rules for the dragons and stuff like that. If you're into the game or you're just getting into the game, first edition, you could take a pass on this. Like, yeah. dra dragons are cool, but for the price that this goes for, nah, not, you know. So what else do we have over on that side? We have 
Code of Chivalry. This sounds a little interesting. A little dust. So this one is cool because the stuff that we, we were showing you before is like added fantasy. But this is more just straight up medieval combat. Look, 42 new figures. Oh, right? Some right. mounted knight lancers, knight swordsmen, and mounted knight long swordsmen and stuff like that. So this just adds medieval rules and a bunch of scenarios to play medieval battles. If you're like me and you geek out over little plastic dudes, <laughs> this is awesome. And this, is, this is actually one of the first expansions I got because I was like, oh yeah, pieces. <laughs> oh, I love God. But it doesn't add a ton of complexity to the original game. Right. That's what I like about a lot of these expansions is that it adds new fun stuff to play with, but it doesn't make the game any harder to play. We have Horrific Horde. Horrific Horde. This is just tons of... This is the same as that, but goblins. Tons okay. of goblins. This was cool because it adds just tons of new pieces, just like ogres and, and hobgoblins and goblins, new units that, you know, that do cool new stuff. And it just expands your armies, right? So that's cool. I love that. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. So this is my favorite expansion, I think. Bearded Brave. Bearded Brave. Bearded Brave. And this is my favorite expansion because dwarves. Who doesn't like dwarves? Come on. Dwarves are freaking awesome. Oh, they're way better than elves. And, the, and this comes with, like, like you know, dwarven axe swingers, dwarven bolt throwers, dwar <laughs> like four iron dwarf bear riders. Dear lord. Dwarves on bears. <laughs> we gotta see some dwarves on bears, right? I need to see a dwarf on a bear. Show me your bad dwarves. Look at this. Dwarves on bears! <laughs> That's a good band name. I mean, how cool is that? It is That's amazing. cool. That's cool. But but yeah, dwarves on bears. That's what this should have. This expansion should have been called dwarves on bears. That is. That is yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> this one I recommend though. Super cool. Lots of fun. So this was a cool one, and actually, I think this one actually goes for a lot of money now. The Hundred Years War, and this is pretty obvious what this one is. It's, it's about the Three Hundred Year War. Just like a, a non-fantasy medieval expansion adds 32 new figures, oh. including the guys that I can't pronounce, the ha Halderbeers. This is this is a cool expansion though, because again, I like army expansions, and this adds a lot of cool army units, spearmen, and dudes with crossbows, and cool stuff. And it adds some cool new rules. There's new battles that come with it. The, the one thing that Battle Lore didn't do as well as Memoir 44 is each new expansion would normally come with new scenarios to play. Right. But this would only come, like this only comes with four new battles. Give me more battles. Yeah, yeah. That. This is another oh, one. Wait, I, there's more. There's more. This one I like, Goblin Marauders. <laughs> Goblin Marauders. Who doesn't like Goblin Marauders? I like the oh, art, by and, the way. See, look at that. It's a goblin riding an ostrich, or an emu, or some sort of... Ost Hobgoblin ostrich riders. I mean, how awesome is that? Do you have any ostrich goblins on ostriches of somewhere? Of course, yeah, they're in there. Because I'd like to see that. There you go. Goblin on, a, on an ostrich? <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. It is. It is awesome. It's genuinely a fun game. This is also one I like a lot, but I don't understand the name. Scottish Wars. Scottish Wars. Scottish Wars. A dwarven perspective. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know why they called it Scottish Wars, because this is a dwarf expansion. Again, it's, it adds a ton of dwarf army stuff. Iron Dwarf Cattle Riders. Riding dwarves on cattle, that's Fair cool. Enough. Mounted Knights, for some damn reason. Cool, though. Yeah, I, yeah, and this is another one, again, I like just army expansions, so this, this is cool to me, because I just like to have more stuff. Right. And so it's like, oh, more stuff. <laughs> so speaking of dwarves, Dwarven Battalion... I mean, it's cool. It adds new dwarf figures, dwarven bagpipers, axe swingers. You got a dwarf with axes, right? I mean, if you have to have armies, then you gotta you gotta get that. And just like uh, dwarven skirmishers, or uh, what was that? Dwarven battalion, goblin skirmishers, same sort of thing. Twenty new guys. So this one has like the, the goblin band leader, goblin drummers, spear bearers, and slingers. Some slight new rules. And 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 uh, these thin box ones in general. Yeah, because um, they're the majority of them are pretty. Like these, like Scottish Wars, to me, worth it. This, not quite worth it. Dwarven Battalion that we showed before, not quite worth it. And then the last major one that we have here, I don't use this one a lot, but a lot of people like this because it revamps the rules big time, is called Arms. And this doesn't add armies or anything like this. This is a rules change. Oh, okay. A Call to Arms is uh, all about custom battles. So normally with the game, you're playing preset battles. Right. This, this rule set gives you new decks of cards and stuff like that and it's all about like how to set up your own custom battles huh. so that 
Anytime we can, we set up a blank board, and using these cards, you play the cards, and that lays out your armies, and you know. So why didn't they come out with more of these? I don't, I don't use this a lot because I'm fine with the scenarios that are in there, and I like making up scenarios. Right. But I, I sort of feel like if you get the base game, the very next thing you should probably get is a call to arms. Right. Because this opens up like unlimited possibilities for what you can do with the game, as far as like battles that you can play. And the nice thing about this is. Super cheap on eBay. You can find it. You still find it. You can find it easy on eBay for under twenty dollars. So this kind of is a really great enhancement for the base game because it lets you play the game forever, and you will never play the same game twice. It will be different every time huh. you play based on these rules. Yeah, but yeah, it's a, that's a cool one. Like like I said, I'm a sucker for armies and stuff <laughs> like that. Like give me more plastic pieces, yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll buy. Like Axis and Allies. Don't tell the don't tell the people who make Axis and Allies. But if you just like started make if they just started making like army expansions like oh here's a you know here's a different ship or here's a different plane or something oh kind forget of thing. it forget <laughs> it forget it just oh never do that my wallet can't handle that just never do that again this is first edition now if you want to get battle or new it's second edition and it's a it's the, so, the basics are kind of the same, but it's a different game. This seems strange to me. Okay, so they made this, then they released all the expansions, and they came out with all the expansions, right? Yeah, and, and there's a few. This. There's a few. <laughs> they came out with all these. Yeah. For this. Then... And even some of the paper ones that we haven't shown. Yeah, and then there's like all these... There's a big battle map that they, that they did. So they came out with this, they came out with these, which go past the... <laughs> And then they stopped. And came out with a new version. And then came out with a whole new version. Which now has... Which is now available. Now available, and now has multiple expansions. It has multiple well. expansions, but, but these don't work for that one. Correct. And there's there's fans who have thought about or tried, like, well, can we do... Make a, like a conversion yeah, sheet. Yeah, you get it, yeah. But you can't? The, the, the systems are too different. I wonder why they did that. The, there is an interesting history behind this game, because if you look, I just mentioned Fantasy Flight Games, who which is who makes Battle War. But if you look here, it says Days of Wonder. Those are the people who make Memoir 44. That's because this game was originally with Days of Wonder, but then partway through, Fantasy Flight Games bought the rights to the game. Oh, so it changed. It changed. All right, yeah, you see? Fantasy Flight there. So you can see on the bottom, the game changed ownership manufacturing. There is a version of the Battle Lore rules uh, for Game of Thrones. They made Game of Thrones Battle Lore. Really? So it plays like Battle Lore, except you have the actual heroes like Jamie Lannister okay. and, and those guys who have special powers right. who can lead the troops and stuff like that. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, I really should have said this at the opening of the episode. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is this is cool because there's a Game of Thrones version of this. Like yeah, there's tons of stuff, and uh, and really worth it. It's 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 a fun game. I would like to play this sometime. Let's play it right now. Let's play. All we're right, turn this off and we're gonna play around. All right, see you guys. We're gonna play some games. Bye. Bye. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message.